Welcome to another edition of the show. We talk baseball, softball, and golf on this one. Let's begin with baseball and Kevin Brown, who is a junior right-handed pitcher. Let's go right to the highlight of the season for you. You were on the mound, had eight strikeouts and five and a third innings and an upset win over Vanderbilt, the number 11 team in the country. Uh, you had your game on that night. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, it just felt good to go out against Vanderbilt you know, and throw a good game. I was throwing a lot of strikes. Only had two walks, which is really good. Um, I had a really good defense behind me, you know, Chris Bosso out in center field. He made a couple of good catches that kind of saved me from, you know, giving up some big hits and, uh, you know, having a lot of runs from Alex Holderbach, you know, RBIs that he hit in, that helped out a lot too. Gave me some confidence. How important is it for the team's confidence when you have a win over a ranked team? Because you have played three games against ranked Virginia, the game against Vanderbilt, a game against Kentucky uh, and Louisville, all yeah. ranked teams, and you've had a couple of wins against ranked teams. I mean, it's just a big boost for our confidence because, uh, you know, when we know that we can beat those ranked teams that are the best in the nation, it lets us know that we can beat anybody, and we just got to take that into every game, knowing that we're a good enough team to play against anybody in the nation. I'm sure that Coach Thompson would say this, and I know you have too, that the biggest key is being able to close out games. You've had some close games that have gotten away from you late in games. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what it is. It just seems like we'll get down to the, the back half of the game, you know, the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, and it'll seem like we'll have it or we'll be really close and we just can't seem to close it out. The weather knocked you out of a couple of games this week, midweek. Uh, if the weather cooperates, you have three at home in the OVC against Moorhead State, followed by a game against Western, who returns the game you won in Bowling Green to Richmond next Tuesday. And so uh, with the OVC going into a second weekend, uh, you guys know how important it is. Yeah, well, we're looking to keep up that home streak. We're undefeated right now at home. We want to keep that going, you know, especially in conference and then whenever uh, – WKU comes down to play us. We want to do the same thing we did when we played them at their place. Inside league play, uh, you play three over a weekend. Right now, you're slotted in as the Sunday starter. Yes, sir. What's uh, the key there? Do you? I mean, some people make a big deal out of the Friday game because it's the first, but you're on that back end. Right. Uh, do you feel added pressure when, when you face the Sunday starter? Or does it matter when you take the hill? Uh, it doesn't matter for me when I take the hill. I'm just going to try to do my job. And being the Sunday starter, that gives me more opportunities to look at the batters. You know, through the weekend, Friday and Saturday, I get to see what they're doing and what their tendencies are, and I can use that to my advantage. So you're going to class. Uh, yeah. th those first two games out yes, of the dugout. You're from Paris. You played at Bourbon County High School, went to junior college down in Florida for a couple of years, back to your home state university. Yeah. And uh, beyond that, I know physical therapy is is on your radar. Not a bad, not a bad degree to get for somebody that's in sports. Yes, sir. I just I want to be able to, uh, you know, help people out. I've had to go through physical therapy myself. And I know that it was, you know, tough. And I want to be able to help people through that, especially having experienced it myself. After playing at the successful program of Urban County, now coming back to Central Kentucky to play for EKU, what does it mean to be able to play for a, for a college back here in the Bluegrass State? Oh, it's great. I mean, you know, going from playing in Florida, I was 10 hours away. It was really hard for my family to come see me. And when they did, it had to be a big deal, you know, for them to come see me. And now being back home and I'm just, you know, right up the road, they can come see me whenever. And it's, it's great just being close to home and being able to see my family all the time. Also being out at Earlcombe Stadium, is, it's a nice ballpark now, good oh, place yeah. to uh, good place to pitch. Why are you guys so good at home? Uh, well, Coach T is always talking about, you know, protecting our home turf. So I think that's what it is. It's just we want to, you know, when people come to play us at our field, you know, it's our field, we're going to protect it. What, what are we going to see from you when you hit the mound? What's your, what's your go-to pitch? It's either my fastball or my slider. All right. Be my go-to pitch. Throw them over the plate and make sure you strike them out like you did at Bandy. Eight strikeouts. That was a great yes, game. Sir. Congratulations. Thank you. I really right. appreciate it. Caven Brown, he is uh, one of the pitchers for the EKU baseball team. Again, uh, we advise you to, because of the weather, check ekusports.com to confirm when these games occur. But right now, scheduled, if the weather holds up, Friday, Saturday, Sunday against Moorhead State, followed by a Tuesday game non-conference against cross-state rival Western Kentucky. When we come back, we'll go to golf and talk with somebody who won a big tournament this past week here on Inside EKU Sports. At EKU, you'll learn to take a broader view of your world. But we also understand it's the details that shape the big picture. So go ahead, play with fire, think on your feet, or touch the sky. 
here, you'll be a part of something new, something big, something beautiful. Be a Colonel. Your time is now. Sometimes you gotta close your eyes and breathe Find a way to float away on an ocean breeze Where the sand is a dance floor beneath your feet Let go and unwind On Myrtle Beach time Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with a slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. We talk women's golf now with Raga Christendoter, a freshman from Iceland who won the Pinehurst Intercollegiate and EKU won the tournament as well. You really uh, shot well in, as you told me, tough conditions. It really was, yeah. 35 miles per hour wins on that second day, so scores were high, but we battled through. Yeah, Elsa Moberly finished three strokes behind you, another very good player, and uh, EKU won by 28 strokes, and that was a good team win to start the spring season. It really was. At, at a tough course, and I said tough conditions too, so really got to start it for this. I've got to ask because uh, names in Iceland are different. <laughs> How do you say in your native language your name? My full name? Yeah. Uh, Ragnhildur Kristensdóttir. Okay, I got that. And it's interesting because <laughs> when I looked up your bio and your brothers, uh, not everybody takes the same last name, the father's last no, name. No, absolutely not. I have my, my last name is my dad's first name. Then we just add daughter to the end of it. And my brothers have son at their end of it. You have vacationed in the United States, played a little golf over here. You were telling me your parents actually were over in the United States for school themselves. Yeah, they went to the University of Iowa in the late 80s, early 90s, where my dad studied and my mom is too. What are you major going to major in here at EKU? What's your career goal uh, beyond golf? <laughs> beyond golf, I am majoring in econ, and hopefully one day I will do something with that. Hopefully the dream is to play on the LPGA, though. That would be awesome, off to a good start. Uh, how is golf here any different than Iceland? I've been to Iceland, <laughs> it's a very rocky country, yes. but you still have a lot of golf courses. We do, we have about 60 of them, um, but golf is really different. We got the windy conditions, we got cold, and so we have to dress up, put a lot, a lot of layers, and so it's gonna be tough. We were talking before uh, the show that, that you love team handball, and you played that earlier in, in, your, in your high school or, or you know, growing did, up yes. ages. Yes, I did. I, I've won, what, four Icelandic championships wow. in team handball. And you love that sport? I do. I really love watching it. It's just, I can watch it the whole day if that's necessary. I've talked with uh, both the men's and women's golf coaches at EKU. On the collegiate level, golf is also a team sport, and even though it's a, an individual play, there is a team element to it. Exactly, yeah. We have to like stick together. We have, like, a tradition we do is if we birdie, we leave a starburst for the next player. Awesome. So we get that team element going. How's, how's the transition been? You speak English so well, unlike my Icelandic <laughs> uh, attempts. I wasn't even going to attempt your name. So how's the transition been? I mean, you're away from home. You're a freshman in college. That first semester was tough, I yeah. will, will admit that, but going in now, spring semester is getting on pretty good, so. The United States failed to qualify for the World <laughs> Cup, but I'm now rooting for Iceland, and we have a connection here. Tell us about uh, the connection uh, here at EKU to, to the Iceland, Iceland World Cup team. Yes, uh, my brother, he's actually on the Icelandic national soccer team. Awesome. So they're in San Francisco right now, playing a game on Friday. Hopefully we're going to win Mexico. Against the friendly, and then they're friendly, on to yes. Russia eventually for the World Cup. Yes. So he plays uh, professional soccer. Yes, he does. And did you play soccer growing up as well? I did for like 10 years yeah. approximately. Iceland, you beat England, so you got a <laughs> chance did. in the World Cup, even though you're in a tough group. But uh, it's got to be an awful proud moment for, for the small country to, to be in the World Cup. Yes, they, especially like when the Euro Cup was two years ago, we had that 
98% of the nation watched TV That's when that England game was on. Now back to women's golf. Uh, eventually, the Ohio Valley Conference Tournament will come up, and that's the way to qualify for the national championship. Yeah. And I know uh, Coach Whitson, I'm sure, and all, all the girls on the team are uh, uh, pointing towards that as you get there. Exactly. That is the goal of the year, that's to win Ohio Valley and make it to regionals and go on from there. Stockbridge, Georgia is next over the weekend, and then you come back, and it's on uh, March 30th and 31st. If the weather's good, we uh, <laughs> play out at Arlington in, in the Colonel Classic. Too. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. My parents are coming down, so hopefully awesome. we'll have a good week there. Be fun to catch up with them. I'm sure you miss them. It will. Rag, it's great to meet you. Uh, congratulations you on the win at the Pinehurst Intercollegiate. And uh, as I always say, hit them straight and put them in. Thank you so much. All right, that is Rag, Kristen Dorter. Uh, Daughter, I, I don't even say her name right. You heard how she says it in Icelandic. We'll just leave it at the American version. And uh, great to talk with her. And when we come back, we're going to switch back to the Diamond and talk softball, the EKU softball team, with big games coming up at home. Hit high and deep. Back of the end zone. Brown got it. Moore drives inside. Put it up. And See this one. Swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place. Anytime. Find it here. The OBC Digital Network. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. Welcome back to the show. Stacy May Johnson is an assistant coach with the EKU softball team and the softball team back home for some big double headers against OVC competition to begin leg play. And uh, Stacy, your team has uh, had some pitching depth this year and really hitting the home runs 37 already. Yeah, we've got a really potent lineup um, on any given day. Either eight or nine can put it over the fence um, of our starters. And, uh, and, you know, we've hit a lot of them. We've got a lot of good hitters. It's not just any one person. There's a lot of people hitting a lot of home runs. Plus, like you mentioned, um, we, we've gone five deep on the pitching. New pitchers stepping up every week. And uh, Coach has done a really good job of uh, when somebody gets into trouble, boom, we get somebody else in there, change the momentum, and, and hopefully keep it going in our favor. And a great nine-game winning streak, followed by a couple of really tough close losses down in Texas uh, and against some really good competition. So you're tested and ready for OBC play. Yeah, I, th I think we're ready going into it. Um, we've seen a little bit of everything. You know, we, we've seen some pitchers that have given us some troubles, and hopefully we've, we've learned a little bit from that, and we've seen some pitching that we've really just handled. So I think we're going to be ready for OBC. Um, you know, a lot of our pitchers have gotten great experience as well, and they're young, and so they're going to need that. You have uh, a doubleheader you know, on Saturday and Sunday, and then again, uh, the third conference doubleheader is at home as well. And then also you have UK coming to town. So uh, it's a nice little homestand here and, and time to make hay. Yeah, we're excited about it. Um, hopefully the weather stays great for us. But uh, yeah, we, we really feel like we can make a run in the conference this year. Obviously, we always love playing UK as well. So we're excited about the next few games and the stretch coming up. Uh, hopefully we can get some momentum rolling and win some of these games. Having an assistant coach, uh, the young ladies can look up to you, and I know Jane has been here uh, since the inception of the program and has that respect, but you played at the University of Iowa, and then you were on the national team. You played professional fast pitch softball, been to the Pan American Games, the World Championships as well. Uh, those experiences have to translate, I would think. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, honestly, though, anytime we step on the field, whether it be as a coach or a player, I'm learning about softball. You mm -hmm. know, every single day I'm learning about softball. And the day I stop learning about softball, I'm done. So, um, yeah, but I've got had, had a lot of uh, cool experiences over the years. And, and, you know, hopefully those things can translate over here and, and help uh, our program be successful. You played uh, third base and shortstop throughout your career. And we've talked, we talked before we were on the air, how softball has changed. I remember you used to go 10, 15, 20 years ago, it was 2-1, one, one, zero. Now uh, the scoring has taken over. Yeah, absolutely. And it's changed the way that we've managed the bullpen. Um, just the fact that we have five pitchers that we're using, that's new, yeah. you know. Um, but it's neat. It, it, it makes for a very, very fun uh, game management. And um, Coach is doing a great job. She's she's working hard with the pitchers day to day to get them the pitches they need um, to be successful with, with what they have. And then when the game comes, she's, she's putting them in a great position to be successful. What's your focus uh, on the co coaching staff? What, what are your, your main duties? Yeah, so I mainly work with um, the defense. That's, I kind of run the point on that. Uh, and then I help out. I help Whitney out with hitting quite a bit. Uh, and then come game day, uh, you'll see me kind of managing and, and, and working with the infield. You have two double headers coming up this weekend. What's the message to the team? Because I know getting out of the gate, because you have home games, first six at home, what's the message about OVC play? Well, we, we want this team to believe that they can win a championship. Um, we believe they can win a championship. We want them to believe it. Um, because, you know, it doesn't mean a whole lot if we believe it. They're the ones that have to make it happen. Um, and so it really just comes down to coming in here, taking care of opponents, um, regardless of who they are, whether they're in first place or last place, we need to come in and come to play because nobody in this conference is going to give us anything. We've got to go out there and take it. Sounds good. Good luck over the weekend. All right. Thank you very much. And because of the weather, the Murray State doubleheader will start now on Friday at 2 o'clock. The Austin P doubleheader Sunday at 1 and keep up with things in case other changes are made at EKUsports.com as the Colonels open OVC play with six straight, followed by a game in early April against the University of Kentucky at home. And that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. You can keep up with Colonel Athletics by liking and following our channels at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you back here to keep up with spring sports again in two weeks. And as always, go Big E.